But as ice mass loss from our polar ice sheets accelerates, sea level rise is also accelerating, and that sea level rise poses a significant threat to our coastal communities and infrastructure. In fact, around 10% of the global population live within around five meters of the high tide line. So over the next 100 years or so, hundreds of millions of people will be displaced. And it's really important to understand the patterns of sea level change to figure out how we can mitigate um, these hazards that will be approaching us in our future. So we develop computer models using a system of equations that we think best represent our Earth system. And so the output of our simulation then is this map of how sea surface height will change across our oceans through time. Around Greenland over the last few decades, the main uh, effect occurring is that Greenland, that large ice sheet, is exerting a gravitational attraction on the open ocean, pulling water towards it. Whereas when the Greenland ice sheet is reducing in mass, that gravitational attraction is reduced and therefore sea level actually falls nearby the ice sheet and flows away. But what that actually means then is that because the water is flowing away from the ice sheet, sea level rise elsewhere in regions far from the ice sheet might be larger than we would expect. We have many satellites orbiting Earth and they send out a radar pulse. We compile those repeat measurements and build up maps of how the sea surface height is changing through time. We then have two maps of sea surface height change around Greenland. One that is direct observations from satellites and one that comes from our computer model, our simulation of sea surface height over the last few decades. And we compare those two maps to see how similar they are using statistical methods. And the results show that we're actually detecting a sea level fingerprint within that observational data. The pattern of sea level rise and fall generated by these processes is unique to each ice sheet, and that's why we call it a sea level fingerprint. This unique pattern of sea level change has been predicted by theory and by computer models for several decades, but we've never seen it in the real world in our observational data sets. So this shows that our models were correct, our theory was correct, and we're seeing for the first time a sea level fingerprint in our observations.